Good evening. Property prices have fallen for the third month in succession. It's the first time in 12 years that this has happened, and it's confirmed fears that the housing market has turned. It's also prompted wider fears about the state of the economy. The Bank of England is under pressure to cut interest rates tomorrow, as some high street stores report very difficult trading conditions in the run-up to Christmas. Our economics editor, Evan Davis, looks at the warning signs in Britain and abroad. The end of an era in the housing market. On one of the best underlying measures, house prices in Britain are now falling. If the downward trend continues, and other measures suggest it might, it's been long awaited. There are even websites devoted to the subject. A £300,000 property I can see falling to £200,000. Why? Because we have a global credit crunch, which means there's no easy lending. Secondly, we have higher interest rates than we did have four years ago. And uh, thirdly, the buy-to-let sector, which has been manic until just a few months ago, has, is practically dead now. From a housing downturn to a sharp decline in the general economic mood. It's serious. I think we're facing uh, a significant slowdown. The slowdown the Bank of England is predicting is uh, greater than anything we've seen since this recovery began in, in the early 1990s, uh, and they're typically cautious. Well, here's the housing data from the Halifax, taking the three monthly figures which are less volatile than others. Now, over 12 years of boom, prices have fluctuated but have almost always been rising until today. There's been nothing like this latest fall for over a decade. Now that turn in our housing market is a small piece of a bigger shift as the global economy turns away from easy credit and exuberant banks and consumers. America is feeling this most, combining house price falls, mortgage problems and a credit crunch. Credit has been the motor of the American economy. Is it about to stall? This car dealer near Washington said the banks will still lend to his customers, but... The trouble is just uh, people are uh, not willing to take a chance of getting to the new cars and everything. And because of the, uh, they're talking about recessions and all that, you know, the trouble with the, um, you know, economy. Consumers are already less gung-ho. The worry is the banks will become ultra-cautious too, really slowing the economy down. Back in the 30s it was like that. Not recession actually, it was the D word, depression then, but there was a clear sequence of events. First came a stock market crash. That caused problems for banks who had lent money to stock market investors. So then banks put a freeze on lending. Crash, bang, wallop. Back to the present. Falling house prices and a crash in the subprime mortgage market don't make a depression, but they're hurting the banks. When banks lose money of their own, the effect on lending can be magnified up. Because for every dollar they borrow and lend, they need to keep a cushion of their own cash, a proportion of their lending. The average, though, uh, I think, uh, to, to use 10% is probably a reasonable uh, ballpark estimate. So they lose $1 and they stop lending $10 as a result. Uh, that's essentially the, um, uh, the math, yes. Well, this is a truly global episode. Lying behind the old era of easy credit and the crunch now threatened is China. Cheap imports from there gave us disinflation and low interest rates, but we can't be so relaxed now. My colleague Quentin Somerville reports from Beijing on China's own inflation problem. In China, there's money to be made in pigs. For farmer Wang Chao, they've never been more valuable. So much so that he dropped out of university to care for them. I've learned all I need. Last year, the forecast was that pork prices would rise rapidly. I didn't really care about the degree. Now I can start up my own business. It was a smart move. Pork prices have jumped by half in the past year. Wong Chao made a fortune by staying in the countryside. Demand from the cities is insatiable. Farmers just can't keep up. Prices of everything are rising rapidly. Chinese shoppers have grown used to having more money in their pocket. 20 years of a booming economy means that an entire generation have grown up in prosperity. But rising prices here mean that for the first time, some can no longer afford to put meat on their table. 
and that's come as a shock. In some parts of the country, things are worse still. Three people were killed recently in a stampede at a supermarket, trampled to death as they tried to buy cooking oil that was discounted by just 70 pence. And of course, these days, goods made in China fill the shelves of shops around the world. When prices rise here, the rest of us may end up paying more for our shopping too. Quentin Somerville. Well, tomorrow the Bank of England makes an interest rate decision. It has to worry about possible slowdown and about inflation, but it will probably cut rates. The economy had to reach a turning point. The bank doesn't want it to turn too sharply. Q. Evan, thank you very much. Evan Davis there, our economics editor.